Hello and welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft video. We have opened a fast bond. I'm going to take the fast bond and I'm hoping to do all the fast bond things and have a lot of fun here. There's no other considerations in this pack. There's no, uh, there's no pieces of power and fast bond is basically widely considered to be the best green card in all of cube. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to be very happy with it. The only other consideration here is none. There's no other consideration. If you want to take Chandra or Liliana or Shark Typhoon, be my guest. But I'm going to take the fast bond and I'm going to be looking for some notable, some notable cards. I'm going to be looking for draw seven effects and I'm going to be looking for potentially cards like Strip Mine, Crucible of Worlds to go with... Uh, the fast bond so that you can just take all their all the lands but i don't want to commit myself to a lands deck just yet i just want to make sure i take the just best card that i see in every single pack so here there's some okay green cards there's no fetch lands but the best card by far in this pack is palace jailer so i think i'm just gonna take the palace jailer here and perhaps table something like the raminap excavator not ideal, not an ideal pairing with fast bond, but this pack is so weak, I feel, that I'm just gonna take the jailer here and then just see what's available. This pack is also fairly weak. Nothing that I'm really interested in. There's an aspirin if I want to go aggro. Um, but certainly not the most exciting thing after you first pick a fast bond. There's a blood crypt. And I suppose a Green Sun Zenith as the other options out of this pack. Yeah, there's not much. I'm going to take the Aspirant here. I'm going to take the Aspirant, but I can very easily shift back. I don't think we're missing out on a whole lot here by taking the Aspirant with the Palace Jailer and then uh, just kind of move accordingly. Now, this is a pack. This is a pack, folks. There is a Birds of Paradise, an Inti. Samwise is okay. There's a Skull Clamp and a Renin Six. So this is a far more exciting pack. I'm not too, I don't really want to take the Renin 6 right away. It's good with strip mine effects. So I'm just looking at this pack and thinking, okay, what can I possibly do? I think Birds of Paradise is the most flexible card here. I can definitely take Skull Clamp, but by taking Birds, it just leaves us open to more color combinations if possible. I also do really like Inti though. So do I just take the Inti and just go Boros? I could. That's an option. Uh, all right, let's. I'm 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 feeling I'm feeling like going a little aggro today. The last time we drafted an aggro deck didn't turn out so well for us. We had a gut, so let's um let's shift gears here. And just take Karizev here over Delighted Halfling. Now, note that we could have had, what, a Birds of Paradise to go with the Delighted Halfling. So, that was the other option. Green does seem like it could be open, but so does red. And this is setting us up for a very, very nice curve where we have three two drops already. Inti is a premium two drop to go with the Palace Jailer. And this is for all the aggro drafters out there. Look at this. This is an okay start, right? And then we take a nice Fiery Confluence out of this pack. Inferno Titan would have been... No, I think I always take Fiery Confluence over the Inferno Titan. There's LED if you want to do some combo stuff. We haven't seen too many draw sevens. Let's go ahead and take the Fiery Confluence here. And solid start here for a nice Boros aggro strategy. If you want to be green, Once Upon a Time is nice. The Outland Liberator is also just a nice attack, nice creature that gets in there. Not too big of a fan of any of these, really. I can take Grim Lava Mancer and Pyrokinesis. Which one am I more interested in? We have a lot of red cards. I think I'm going to take the Pyrokinesis over the Grim Lava Mancer. I just think it has a much bigger impact. And it does go with the fact that we have a lot of red cards here. And then this pack, I've never ever played Avacyn, Archangel Avacyn. I'm not a really big fan of Brea's Apprentice. I guess it's an okay three drop. I'm wondering if I take something like that or if I just take a Savine's Reclamation. This is just a three mana two three that makes a one one. I mean, we could maybe be mono red potentially. This is more of a sideboard card. Yeah, let's just, 
let's just take the red card here. See where see where this goes. I'll take a Steel Seraph here if we do end up in Boros. We'll note that our mana is quite bad here. We don't have any red white lands, so I will take this Jetmir's Garden. It's it comes into play tapped, but I think right now that's with the double white, double red cards that we have so far, it's something that we are interested in. And yeah, off the fast bond for now. I think the other direction we could have gone in this draft is fast bond into Ren and Six into. Ooh, I'll take a fire Ren. Fast bond into Ren and Six into Bird of Paradise, Delighted Halfling. We didn't see any fetches or any lands that go into the graveyard though. So. We would have needed something from pack 2 and pack 3. Here I'm going to take a Rada's Firebrand. We do, it's just a decent 2 mana aggressive creature. And then we do have you know, Jetmir's Garden. If we just play random off-color duels as well. Those are something that we could just play. To make the Rada's Firebrand just a little bit better. Look at that LED. That's a late LED. Going to take the Raging Ravine here. This is not an LED deck. And we'll move this to the sideboard. So we did see Palace Jailer, but not a lot of white creatures afterwards. Maybe it was just some weak packs. There was also a Steel Seraph that we saw. But right now, we really need to make sure our mana works. We don't have enough cards for a straight up mono red deck. So we do need to make sure that we can get the mana situation fixed here. Cards like Arid Mesa and Sacred, uh, Sacred Foundry and Plateau are cards that we're going to want to take very, very highly. This pack, we have the choice between Esper Sentinel and a Braid. Ballista's okay, but I think the choice is between those two cards. And we are lacking a little bit of interaction. Esper Sentinel is okay, but I think I'm just going to take the Abraid because I think there's a small chance we end up in Mono Red. And I don't want to miss out on their braid. I think there's a good chance we table either the Portable Hole or the Esper Sentinel out of this pack. Here I see a Chain Lightning. Ooh, that's an Atraxa. That is an Atraxa. That's the premier reanimator flash through the breach. It just works with everything. So this is a fantastic card. Obviously, we're not going to be taking it. There's a Misty Rainforest, which would have gone with our Fast Bond maybe. If we have ways to recur, but for us, it's between Chain Lightning, but I see a Plateau. I miss the Plateau. I, as much as I love Chain Lightning and I think Chain Lightning is fantastic, it is more important to at least have one of these red-white lands so that any fetch you get afterwards gives you a red-white duel. So I'm going to take a Plateau here, hopefully table the Chain Lightning, but probably not going to. And nice. That's the draw seven that we were looking for. Time Twister is great, but I'm also really happy with Fury. Fury is fantastic in this style of deck. You can just play a turn five and you just get a giant beater. It's like, a, it's like a super FTK, but also you can just cast it early. So if we play against a bunch of creature decks, we are pretty well positioned with Pyrokinesis, Fury, Fiery Confluence, Palace Jailer, and a Braid. There's also Containment Priest that I do really like in these uh, because Reanimator tends to be one of the more difficult matchups. So that's something that I'll be keeping an eye out for. This pack has... Wrath of God and Winds of Abandon. Wrath of God is obviously not the type of card we want in this strategy. But there's an Umizawa's Jite, and I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it over the Earthshaker Kenra here. I think it is just a stronger card. But maybe we table either, either the Kenra or the Scrapwork Mutt out of this pack. We're not going to play this Ravine. Any more beats? Yep, there's a Thalia. That's perfect. Phenomenal 2-drop to play here. Very happy to pick up Thalia. And maybe we can perhaps... Wield the Sarah Paragon. Yeah, we have that. In it. We have some ways to disrupt them. Um, having something like Elite Spellbinder, just more ways to tax your opponent's mana is nice. Wow, this is a great pack for us. And look at all the reanimator stuff is getting passed to us. There's a Gristlebrand in this pack too. So for us, it's between Smuggler's Copter and Thraben Inspector. I think they're both really good, but I really like Smuggler's Copter in this type of deck, and we have a lot of cheap creatures. So I think I'm going to take the Copter over the Inspector, but we don't have any 1-drops. And I do, I, like I said, I do like me a Thraben Inspector, but I think the Copter is just better. We have 6 twos now though, so I think if we start getting into a situation where we have the option between taking a 1 and a 2 or, or what have you, we'll be leaning towards the 1s. What kind of 1s do we want? Mother of Runes, Giver of Runes. Uh, that Esper Sentinel that we opened, or that we saw early. The Figure of Destiny that is in the cube. 
those are the cards that we would like here. But we have a nice curve. I'm happy with that plateau. And I do anticipate some cards wheeling here. All right, we got a nice cheap interaction spell here in the Path to Exile. Given that we took the plateau, I don't want to play another Triome in this deck. I know mana, I know I stress the importance of mana, but it's also important to have good, really cheap interaction. So I'm going to take the Path to Exile over the Rogrin Triome and the Delayed Fire Blast, noting that there's also Crucible of Worlds in this pack. Ooh, okay. So here. We have two one drops available. We have Usher of the Fallen and Dragon's Rage Channeler. I think Usher of the Fallen is just generally better. We have a lot of creatures in this deck, so we're not going to be able to use that ability on the DRC that often. So I think I'd rather just have Usher of the Fallen in this deck. Wow. Torsten. Wish I was Reanimator just because all the Torsten, Gristlebrand, uh, attracts that were all available, but nothing for us. Do I take Rafine's Tower? I mean, none of these picks really matter. I don't think I'm going to Mana Morphos, so... I'll, I'll take the Tower if I maybe have some Domain thing going on here. Here there's a Soul Scar Mage. I don't have that many spells. Do I want to take it though? It's a one drop. A, a, pr a Prismatic Ending for just two is not the most exciting thing, so I'm going to take this for Curve Considerations and nice. The Containment Priest tabled, so really happy about that. And both Earthshaker, Kenra, and Scrapwork Mutt tabled. Oh, Ashen Rider for the reanimator decks, but I'm going to take the Earthshaker, Kenra. The Esper Sentinel, though, did not table, so that's something to know. And that's just disrespectful. Look at that Cryptic Command going almost last. There's a Rabid Battery here. I am not a big fan of this card, but it might be better than Soul Scar Mage. But they're both kind of mediocre. I like Soul Scar Mage a little bit more in mono red decks that tend to play a bit more spells, but we have one, two, three, four, five, five-ish spells right now. So not something I'm too, too interested in. Both of these one drops are kind of weak. This pack, ooh, there's that flash. But this pack has Bloodstained Mire and Swords to Plowshares. I think Swords is simply too good here. I love me a Bloodstained Mire to go with the Plateau, but Swords is the best removal spell in the entire format. So I'm going to take the swords here, and we have two of the premier one mana removal spells. Maybe we'll table something like a seasoned hallow blade out of this pack. But we're going to have more than enough playables in this in this draft. So I am happy taking mana over some creatures because we're looking on. Even if we don't play these cards, we're looking at just needing four more playable cards here potentially. Here we have gut again, <laughs> or rampaging ferocidon. Is this a good gut deck? We have Kari Zev. We have Kari Zev. I think we play. We just take the gut here. The upside is so much higher than taking something like a Rampaging Ferocidon. And look, we can make a token off the Usher. And hey, heck, we can even upgrade our one drops into four one menace creatures. So, and we have the Brea's Apprentice that we may or may not play. So happy enough with that gut here, and we are slam dunking this Wooded Foothills into our pile. There's also an Oliphant. But I don't want to pay the mana to get the land. I want to just get Wooded Foothills to get me that plateau. There's a Wandering Emperor that might table. But we are really happy with this fetch land to help our mana base situation. This pack has some interesting interactive spells. We have Dismember and Skyclave Apparition as the options for us. There is an Emberclave, which is okay. There's a Glimmer Lens, which is also decent. But we're really good on twos right now. right? We are looking at... Eight two drops that I'm pretty happy playing. So I don't think I need to take the Glimmer Lens, although I do recognize that it's a pretty decent card. Bal this is not a balanced deck, so it's Dismember or Skyclave Apparition. And I think generally I prefer Skyclave Apparition. We do have a Path and a Swords already. So I just like having removal spells that also double as creatures. So we'll take the Apparition here. And there's a Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp is really nice. Oh, there's a. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, sorry. My eyes played tricks on me. We said we needed one drops. How about a Ragavan? How about a Ragavan? Ooh, Archon of Cruelty. I don't know. Sorry. The, it, it looks like I'm going to draft Reanimator in the future because I haven't drafted one in a while and all these big targets are, are enticing me. But Ragavan, I was talking. I was going to talk about the Flicker Wisp Containment Priest interaction. I think there is a chance we table one of these two white cards. There's clearly another white drafter at the table, but I'm happy having either the Hero or the Flicker Wisp. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think there's a shot, but 
There are some unplayables like the Weather Sea Treaty in here, but I am really happy with that Ragavan. Thrilled! Here we have, I suppose, Intrepid Adversary versus Goldspan. Now, I am a big fan of Goldspan Dragon, but in these style of decks, in these style of decks, would I rather have the Intrepid Adversary? Hmm. It is a two. We're not lacking in twos, though, and I'm kind of looking for a big finisher to go over the top. Yeah, mm, yeah, let's play Goldspan. I'll, t I'll take Goldspan over Adversary. I don't think Adversary is like some crazy bomb. So we'll take that. Here we'll take... Oh! Surinorb, Crucible, Fastbond, hello. There is a Lurus of the Dream Den and a Magda. Magda is really good with Gut. But Lurus is also just a phenomenal creature to play. I'm not sure what to take here. Magda is also good with Smuggler's Copter. If we get enough treasures, we can fetch something. Oh, man. Lurus gets us just all these creatures back. But I really, I really, oh man. I really like the gut. I want to draft around this gut. I think Luris might be better. It's kind of hard to cast. But I really want to try Magda. I want to try Magda and Karizev plus gut. And I just really want to see how that goes. So I'm going to take that, recognizing the power level of something like a Luris. Here it's an easy parallax wave. We don't have that much at the top of our curve, and we do have the combination of Parallax Wave plus Containment Priest. So really happy with this Parallax Wave. And now we have a Phyrexian Revoker, a Seasoned Hallowblade, and a Pyrite Spellbomb. I guess I'll take the Hallowblade. It's just a really difficult to deal with threat. Then here I'll take a Ferocidon over Leyline Binding. And then here, I guess I'll take Olifant and play it. It is a duel. It makes it makes my mana a little bit better. It's a little bit awkward, but the look, if I'm if I'm gonna play cards like Pyrokinesis and Fury too, having something that gets me a land and also something I can pitch to these two cards is pretty nice. We are never ever gonna be playing this balance, so we'll take the Sky Sovereign. But we are a little bit heavy on playables, but we might cut something like that. And figure the rest out. We gotta cut like four. 25, so we got to cut like two more cards. But I'm liking this. I, I'm liking, I feel like this is, uh, this might be a better gut deck than one of the previous ones that we drafted. We have both of the premier two drops, it's not that. The dragon engine, sure. We have both Inti, not Inti, we have both Magda and Karizev to go with the gut. And I just really wanted to make that happen. All right, let's take a look here. I'm gonna put the, these are kind of, this is kind of my maybe pile here. Probably this goes here too. And then just separate out, separate it out by the things that I really like. We have lots of creatures, look at this. And then this is almost a creature as well. And this also kind of goes in the land pile. So this is the deck. Looks pretty good. The, our removal suite includes two one mana spells and a braid. We have a GTA, a Confluence, Parallax Wave, Apparition, and Palace Jailer, and Fury. So I think our removal is good enough where we probably can just uh, sideboard the Pyrokinesis for now. And then we don't, again, we don't have enough spells for Soul Scar Mage to be all that great. And then it's just a matter of whether or not we should consider any of these cards. I think I want. I think Steel Seraph is probably the best option of these. Breya's works best with Gut, but I think just being able to give something evasion is nice. So let's just probably cut a two drop from here. I think it's between the Earthshaker Kenra and Seasoned Hallowblade. I kind of like all the others. I like the fact that the Radha just continues to make things difficult on the opponent to block. So I think it's a pretty good aggressive creature. Obviously it can die pretty easily. Karizev, Magda, Inti, Thalia, Aspirin, Containment Priest are all great. Containment Priest combos with the Parallax Wave and also just to have a main deck answer to Reanimator. So I think it's between one of these two. Yeah, I'll just cut the, I'll just cut the Kenra. Let's run it here. So we have these four as mana sources. 
And I think the only font's actually very important here just to make sure that I have another red white source because of the color requirements in this deck. This gives us seven, 11 white and 10 red. And we don't have as much double red, so that seems good. So by color, yeah, we have more cheap, cheaper double white cards here. Whereas Goldspan Dragon is something you play later. And then Fury and Fire, uh, Fury is also something that you can play later or also for free. Okay, match one. Can we do well with the Boros combination? I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't complain if there was just a Ragavan on top of our deck. Just right here, just, just boom. Okay, okay, all right. Fury, Fury is okay. So Fury is just Pyrokinesis, but also a 3-3. Very nice. Interesting, so there's a Smuggler's Copter. I'm kind of interested in killing it. Wow, this converter does not... Oh, converter plus copter? We just can't let that happen. All right. Does this give haste? No, flying vigilance or lifelink. Talisman of conviction. Okay. This is a strange Boros deck. Or a mono white deck. Okay, Embereth Shield Breaker. Okay. We're going to get their hopes up real high here. Crew. Okay. <laughs> Beginning combat. Okay. All right, let's kill it. They're like, womp womp. They, they were trying to set up here. Although Currency Converter is just a good card, so... This Fury can be very, very nice here. Ooh, Ragavan. That's interesting. So I was going to just play the Steel Seraph, but now I think I want to go Ragavan and Thalia because then next turn, <laughs> oh, that's this is awesome. Next turn I can go Steel Seraph, give my Ragavan wings and get in and try to get the treasure. So let's try, let's do that. Let's go Ragavan and Athalia. Nice little one-two punch here. There's a shield breaker. Eventually we'll see the text. There it is. All right, they are converting some currency. Yeah, typically currency converter is not really what you want to play in kind of a red-white. Oh, Mox Ruby, I would have, I would have, I would have, been super excited for that Mox Ruby, but alas, not for us. But it's okay. We got the Steel Seraph here, prototype. Ragavan, you may fly. Oh, this is great. Okay. Ooh, we can even play the Usher off the treasure. What do we get? Something cheap? Ooh, can't play that one. But I am happy enough playing an Usher of the Fallen here. All right. Nice board here. And we have a Fury. So if they just play like a vanilla three toughness creature, that would be wonderful. Okay, so they get a 2-2 two -two and a 2-1. So this Fury is looking very tempting. Oh my gosh, that is not real. That is not real. Did this just happen? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, my opponent will be furious. Okay, sorry, just pretend I didn't say that one. Oh my gosh, that is so dirty. Okay, okay. What are we exiling here? Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, Th this is just the best Fury ever. Sure, let's exile Kari Zev. Oh my goodness. I mean, they might just, they might just concede to this. 
Yep, and uh, we were right. Okay. Red, white. Pyrokinesis, get on down. Get on down, Pyrokinesis. Okay, so this is another creature matchup. So I think we can get pretty creative with how we sideboard. I think the boat could also be good. Sky Sovereign, just this is a creature matchup. Um, cards like Containment Priest are likely not as good. I think Parallax Wave is still a good card without the combo. And then Brea's Apprentice, just the fact that it's a creature that makes that puts another permanent in play is pretty nice. And we need to cut two more cards here. So on the draw, I'm going to start looking at some other options. Thalia could still be interesting just because it's a first striking creature, which is always nice in this type of matchup. Eh, I kind of like the Hallow Blade, but I think we can cut the Firebrand here as well. We're going up the mana curve. Usher of the Fallen is still okay just because it's a one, I think. Steel Seraph goes here in the three mana slot. And yeah, maybe it is Thalia. Sure. Okay. That one I'm not super confident on. Thalia slows us down too. We have some number of good expensive spells. But we have a GTA. That's got to be one of the better cards in this matchup. We do need some, some mana sources. Ooh, that would have been really nice. Our opponent, though, has Soul Ring and Mox Ruby in their Boros deck. That is not, that is not fair. Opponent, that is not fair. I'm going to lead with Plateau because if I draw Ragavan... If I draw Ragavan, I can play it and then play the Jetmir's Garden. But, I mean, this is a completely busted start. If they play like a Planeswalker, make a token, and then cr crew the Copter, I'm probably just dead. Oh, it's a Lurus. Okay. So this is interesting. They have Lurus and they also have Smuggler's Copter. So do I path the Smuggler's Copter or do I path the Lurus? Because they can loot something away. Unless I kill the copter now. That's really interesting. I think I'm, I think I'm just going to kill the copter. I'll find removal for the Lurus. And this exiles too, which is nice. Alright. And here... I think this is just a good use of my mana, so I'm going to run out the Jitae here. Oftentimes you want to wait till you hit 4 mana and play it and equip it, but I think I also I just like being able to spend my mana. My opponent's so far ahead on resource, or not resources, but on mana here, because we have the path as well. Alright, maybe they just have a bunch of removal. That's interesting. Smuggler's Copter. I think, I, I think I'm just going to play the Brea's Apprentice here. Having two targets for the GTA is very good. They have to have some, some amount of removal right now. This Jetmir's Garden is extremely... Oh, okay. It's okay. What happens when this... When, some, when, when a non-angel creature dies? Okay. So then this gets flipped. All right, we will take it. Land would be nice. Maybe they just don't have a removal spell. Source of Plowshares would be great. Parallax Wave, what do you do? Well, you deal with that angel for a while. So let's go ahead and just play the wave. Then wave this away. And I will attack with the Thopter, but I'll keep the Apprentice back. Can I play this? No. Just checking. <laughs> Just checking. Yeah, happy enough trading my Brea's Apprentice for Lurus here. And then just try to pile on some counters onto the Thopter token if possible. 
This is not really a great trade for them. Okay. All right, lure us down. Don't have to worry about that. Unless they have like a Savine's Reclamation here, maybe. Oh. Okay. Okay. If we draw land, we can play Goldspan Dragon. Winds of Abandon. Well, we can now 100% play Goldspan Dragon. Okay. We're going to have to deal with that angel at some point. <laughs> um, this is interesting. I mean, it's, it's really just play Goldspan Dragon, right? At this point, I think I want to keep the Jetmir's Garden to cycle. But let's go ahead and attack. And then we can save it with Parallax Wave 2 if they have a removal spell. And then we can just play the Smuggler's Copters here. Smuggler's Copter here, rather. So their hand is Luris plus one unknown card. They have a lot of mana in play. We have a Parallax Wave on 3 with an Archangel Avacyn underneath, which is going to be a problem. We need to find an answer at some point for it. Hopefully we can find a source of Plowshares, or hopefully we can pile on enough counters on Umizawa's Jite. Alright, then let's, let, let's tap it for double mana. I think that's a little bit better. Alright, Copter in play. So Parallax Wave, again, I gotta remember I can use it to save the Goldspan Dragon. Really, really tough for them to deal with. They're probably gonna jam Luris at least. Adeline. Interesting. So that gives them an extra... That gives them an extra token. So th the question now becomes, do I also want to kill Adeline temporarily? And I think the answer might be yes. All right. So we have we now have two turns on the Archangel Avison. Another question is, do I crew the Copter with the Dragon if I don't draw a creature? And they did not play the Lurus. Okay. Oh, that's a nice one. Magda. Magda plus Copter is great. Oh, wow. Okay, crew. And then... Who do we want to put a GTA on? I guess the gold span. Okay. More treasures. Let's loot. Draw a card. And... Yeah, let's pitch the Jetmir's Garden here. Two counters on the Jite. And then we can tap Sack of Treasure for two red. I want to cast Ragavan so I can just move the Jite over here, like this. And we're looking pretty good. We got a Ragavan with the Jite on it, a Goldspan Dragon. Oh, yes. Do they really want to do this? Okay, I'll block. And then... This gives me an extra counter on my Ragavan. Or sorry, uh, this gives me an extra GTA counter if they do this. I know they can play it with, with Luris, but that's not a big deal. But I, I, th I feel like I just got a free counter on my... On my oh! I see. Yeah, but that was still a bad attack, right? You still just gave me a free counter on my on my GTA. So, interesting. They boarded in Wrath of God here. They boarded in Wrath of God against... In, in the mirror. Wait, actually, that's not terrible. So now, I'm going to use the Parallax Wave to save my Goldspan Dragon. And all the creatures are going to come into play next turn. Okay.
And Wrath of God is good. All right, that, that was a good Wrath of God. I do have a GTA on 4, but now a bunch of stuff comes into play. Now, let me look, at, let me read this uh, Archangel Avacyn here. When the creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn, including itself. I see. And they have a Lurus in hand. Okay, so we have a lot we need to fight through. Ooh, that's a gut. Not especially good here. Because they can just double block it. I don't really want a Smuggler's Copter either. Okay, so what I can do is um, equip Jite onto Gold Band Dragon attack. If they block with the Archangel Avacyn, then I can turn it into a 3-3. Damage happens, and then I get more counters on the GT, and then I can finish off the Avacyn. All right. Our creature gets minus one, minus one. All right. Let's kill Avacyn. It's indestructible, but you can still shrink it to death. Nice. Okay. And then we play Gut. We'll sack a treasure for two mana, and we will equip the gut. So now the gut is a 4-4, four, four, potentially. We can get some more counters on this. And sometimes GT does a lot of work, especially in these creature matchups, but a lot of good back and forth between us. And yes, Goldspan Dragon doing it for us again. We are keeping this hand. So this is what I meant though, the the uh, the the Oliphants can sometimes be a little bit awkward. In, in in this instance, very awkward. This Fury is probably gonna be very good though. Anytime your opponent goes land Bomad Courier, that Fury. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Maybe we're just casting the Oliphant. Or we're we're exiling it to the Fury. So. Oh, okay. Our opponent just came here and chose violence. This planes. They chose violence. Oh. I mean, it is kind of tilting me. So. <laughs> Are they going to kill the Usher? Probably, right? Do you have a removal spell? You know what be nice? A Magda. I'm just going to make a 1-1 one -one here. Yeah, nice. Happy trading this 1-1 one -one with, with any of these things. Although I do have a Fury. Oh, well, there's not much we could have done there, right? So. Okay. Hey, look. Thank you, opponent. I needed just a little bit more juice for my Fury. And this is enough. This is enough. We can go Fury, Exile Oliphant, and then just slam Gut, I guess. I would rather not. I like playing Gut when I have something else in play, but it's a better use of my mana relative to just casting the Rada's Firebrand. A Firebrand might still be the correct choice because it's going to be hard for them to actually attack through. A Braid is nice. And it also just hits for more, but I have a lot of two drops in my deck.
There we go. Kaboom! Yeah, I'm just gonna play gut. Yeah. No, that's this is better. Oh, hero of blade hold. Ay ay ay. Yeah, that's tough. The question now is do I want to be able to just kill it? Is it is it of utmost importance to kill it? The nice thing about Karizev is that I can block the token and kill that, and then I can take five damage, I suppose, and then just try to race them. Oh, we're playing against Team J, bro. They are the trophy leader, so we're playing against uh, an endgame boss here. We are playing against an endgame boss. I think we just play out our creatures and just recognize that hero gets us pretty good and hope we can draw something like a Swords to Plowshares or um, a Path to Exile. A five mana card. Ooh, Othari. Okay. That's... Yeah, he knew what he was doing with these planes. He knew. J-Bro. All right, we are super dead here. It was looking good for a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that, I guess. All right, well, pyrokinesis comes in, but man, these uh, these top end threats are are tough. So we kill off the hero, we can upbraid the Othari, and then we're, we're facing off against the rebel token and a 2-1. Okay, they have no cards. It's not over. It's not looking good. It's not over. Tap and untap rebel. Ah, oh, this card is so, like, I needed to find, I needed to maybe kill the rebel token because they can just, it puts it back into play? That's unreasonable. I mean, we got to do what we got to do, right? We just keep this back. So they can just tap this rebel token. Sorry. I have not actually used this ability, the second ability, all that often, to be honest. I usually just attack with it and then they lose. Or they... <laughs> but in this type of grindy matchup, it's like, uh-oh. We go to their combat, kill Athari, and then they just tap it and put it back into play. I I don't know. I mean, I have I have I have to do this though, right? Yep, it's not attacking. I don't know that I have a card in my deck. I suppose. Parallax wave into containment priest. I mean, look, we gotta. That's sadly not enough. Yeah, that's sadly. Like we can, we can do this. We can GTA, kill a rebel token. Then we take three, four, five, six. Yeah. Oh well. All right. Good beats. Good threats. Let's uh, board basically the exact same way that we did in the other matchup. On the play though, the Firebrand is a little more enticing. Cut the Thalia. Maybe it still is the Firebrand. Yeah, okay. This goes here. This is here. All right. Yeah. But Hero Blade Hold, I mean, the um, the four and five mana cards are just such premium cards. Othari, what, part of why, another reason why Boros is so strong, where before you would just go mono red or mono white. I mean, the gold, the gold red white cards are all 
bump bonkers. Fourth year Lingus and Othari both are just incredible, incredible bombs. Bombs even in the cube draft. All right, Jay bro. I need you to I need you to chill, and let me get two two hits with the Ragavan. All right. Just just two. I'm just asking for two hits. All right. It looks like um, it looks like he doesn't want to be chill. I mean, we're gonna clear the way here. We will. Ooh, I'm gonna use a braid on this because I want to save swords to plowshares for hero blade hold potentially. And what do we exile? Silent clearing. Okay. All right, is this Ragavan dying? I could give it lifelink. Might as well play the Silver Seraph. Um, no, I want to attack first. I don't think I care as much about my life as being able to cast something that I steal, so. All right, it's down. And then cast this with prototype. We're a little bit um, stuck on mana here, but hopefully what we have is good enough. I mean, our hand is fantastic. We just need to string together some lands. This one's probably dying. Okay, well, that is a land. Let's give it lifelink. Then let's mountain cycle. Let's get a mountain. And let's just go ahead and play the GT here. Palace Jailer. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Okay. We can use Skyclave Apparition on this. I think we kind of have to. Palace Jailer very strong. And we just kind of have to hope they don't have another removal spell. If they have Othari, we do have the swords. Okay, that's good. Okay. So they're going to at least draw a card this turn, but I'm glad we kept up the swords, just the way that our, our mana works. They're going to draw a card, but we are going to get the monarchy back. Yes. Okay. We'll play Magda here. We get our Steel Seraph back. Oh, that was big. Very big. Oh, all right. All right. Hey, I'm just happy enough that I got a game off of the legendary J Bro. The cube, the cube endgame boss. Do we want this dragon engine? No. I just need to draw Ragavan and Source of Plowshares every game. That that's it. That, that, that's it. Is that hard? I wonder if this dragon engine is good, good enough. Just in the late game, you just. I don't know. Maybe? Uh, not the ideal hand there. We will keep this. Ooh, this hand is really good. I think I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll just bottom the Karyzev. I think Fiery Confluence has the potential to be very good. And I already have a two mana play here anyways. Giver of Runes, okay. So, how do we sequence this out? We go turn two Aspirin, turn three Apparition. Not bad. Apparition on the Giver of Runes. Let's 
play the planes. Try not to get wastelanded here. I mean, the other option is also just playing the smuggler's copter, but I think I want to just get the counters going on the aspirant. Although if they pass with mana up, they could have removal, in which case I may be more interested on smuggler's copter. Now, if that removal spell is specifically a braid, then it doesn't matter. But we could, I guess, play the copter to play around various lightning bolt effects, right? Or shocks or anything of that, of that nature. In which case, maybe it is the smuggler's copter. Yeah, let's go smuggler's copter. There's an abrade, okay. Well, stomp, okay, yeah. All right, well, su for that, uh, super happy that we played the copter over the aspirant there. And now they're just gonna jam the bone crusher and not attack with giver. So we'll have to use skyclave apparition. Interesting. Okay. They don't want to protect a bone crusher. So then now it's like, do I want an apparition to bone crusher giant? Or is this still such a problem that I need to kill it anyways? Hmm. I feel like this is a really, a really big decision here as to what I choose to get with the apparition. The nice thing about the bone, if I get the bone crusher, I just take a lot less damage. If they kill the apparition though, they Yeah, I'm gonna kill the I'm gonna kill I'm gonna get the bone crusher here. I just think they were on the play. And this allows me to crew the this allows us to get in there with the smuggler's copter. And I know this makes it annoying for future turns, but we do have plenty of removal. Ooh, smuggler's copter plus inti is nice. And if they still choose to attack us with the giver, giver runes after killing the Skyclave Apparition, we can just cast Fire Confluence. Ooh, never mind. They probably want to protect the hero now. All right. Um, what do we do in this instance? I mean, are we kind of all in? Are we all in on our Smuggler's Copter? Feels like that might be the case. In which case, I am... So it's weird, because I want to cast a spell off of the Inti. I want to cast a spell off the Inti, and I want to hit one mana removal effects. So maybe I hold off on the Luminarch Aspirin, even though that feels a little counterintuitive. But I think the Inti is going to help us find potential answers to this Blade Hold more. So let's run out Inti. Crew. The thing is, I could, again, I can play Luminarch Aspirin and just get in for five. Well, let's think about this for just one more second here. If I attack and I loot with the NT and also get in with the Aspirant, that is an attack for five damage. That gets him down to 12. And then next turn, I can get in for six and then Fiery Confluence for six. So actually, actually, I think this is correct. Now, if they authority us, they authority us. But I think this is correct, given that we have Fiery Confluence in hand. We're just kind of all in on Smuggler's Copter here. Oh, this gets in for five, what am I saying? Five and then, yeah, yeah, five, and then six next turn. Yeah, exactly. Do we have anything free? Oh, I, I guess I exile anyways. But I am interested in putting a counter on here. Yeah, I am interested in putting a counter on here. I mean, this is highly dangerous. 
but I think it gives us the best shot here. They need to kill both Inti and Luminarch Aspirant. Okay. Again, it, this all crumbles if they play Land Othari or has an Abrade for the Copter. But based on the fact that they have Hero of Bladehold, I think this just gives us, again, the best opportunity here because it just forces them to have an answer for the Copter. If they kill the Aspirant or the Inti, it's fine. Like as long as one of them lives, it's okay. Even if they Palace Jailer, it's fine. Oh, jeez. Okay, so now we need a red source. Oh, that makes this a lot worse. Hell Rider, okay. But they're at 12. Okay, and the, the, the tokens don't trigger off the Hell Rider here. So I need to just find a red source here, right? Okay, so we're at 14, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. This is a five, five. Oh my, okay. If they have Fire Blast, we can actually potentially beat Fire Blast. I don't know that they're going to play Fire Blast here. So if I find an answer to Giver Runes, can I kill them? If I find an answer to Giver Runes, I crew the Copter, attack for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. Let's take it. Land. Mountain. Mountain. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay. That is phenomenal. Whew. All right, crew with the aspirant. I'm still putting a counter on the copter here in case they have some way to kill this at instance like a sol well solitude we're just we're just dead right all right yeah i'll pitch that okay no Whew, that strip mine almost got us, folks. But we, Fiery Confluence has been so good for us recently. Bam! <laughs> yes! 2-0! Okay. Okay. Another trophy. I can... It's possible. It's possible. You just gotta believe. Great curve here. Ooh, Palace Jailer as well. Okay. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Did they not play a land? All right, max max pun, max beatdowns here. This gives us the most damage over time. Wow. All right. A woodfall. Okay. <laughs> Thalia was a phenomenal draw. We're definitely playing that. So they can't cast reanimate. Like even if if they cast reanimate, they go to five. They kill our mountain. And then they die. I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right. Well, that was... Uh, I can't say that was the most difficult win that I've, uh, that I've experienced. Ferocidon can be okay if they're on the... 
reanimate Gristlebrand plan. I think this is probably a matchup where... Actually, maybe the Steel Seraph is not... Like, how many creatures is this reanimator deck going to play? Also, this might be a matchup where Goldspan Dragon is not at its best. Where it's it's more about just putting as much pressure early as possible. I can definitely believe that. In which case, we just maybe play the Kenra and cut a land. Because we, we've taken out the 5-drop. And can we go to 16? Something like that. GTA is also not especially good. We'll try this. We're on the draw too. So 16 mana sources. Of, yeah, well. Punished. Punished. Alright. Keep. And... I think I like Steel Seraph the least. I like Parallax Wave as a potential way to stop some of the creatures that come in. Oh my goodness. Okay. I will accept Ragavan. Hope it doesn't die. Surely the black based deck won't be able to kill my Ragavan. Incoming Orcish Bowmasters. Or Baleful Strix, sure. Okay. Let's just put a counter on the Aspirant. And hope we can draw a way to kill the Baleful Strix so that Ragavan can get in. That's, that's not the one. I mean, I can, um, hmm. Yeah, well, let's play the Ferocidon. Interesting, okay. All right, so this one's not going as well for us. Let's put, I'll trade this with the Malcolm, sure. Or the Baleful Strix, even. That way Ragavan can get in. All right, that's good. This might be a very short match, folks. It's like either our opponent... Our, it's like either our opponent does the reanimator thing, which we have almost no answer for, and they get us, or we just beat them down. We have Containment Priests as kind of the best option for them. But they have Malcolm and Baleful Strix. It's making me consider. Ooh, and they have a lot of good cheap cantrips as well. It's making me consider the Pyrokinesis almost. We don't need power. Who needs power? We have powerful creatures. Yep. This is going to not be great for us. If they discard a large monster, we are probably dead. They cast Brainstorm and Preordain, so... Crater Hoof? Hey, you know? If we draw planes... Crater Hoof is an interesting one. Okay. Hedron Crab? Okay. Oh! I don't mind that, but we're just, aren't we just dead to Crater Hoof? I don't know. So we can go Earthshaker Kenra on the Baleful Strix, then just beat down. The Ragavan will get blocked by the Crab. Oh no, this, this is, this is a lot of damage. Yeah, well said Paul, this is a lot of damage. Anyways. My stuff doesn't trample. Okay. And then we put a counter on, sure, the Kenra. What, what happens if we put it on the Ferocidon? Five, they block here. All 
Okay. So now they go to one and they can't reanimate a creature unless they play the Rampaging Ferocidon. Unless they kill the Rampaging Ferocidon. <laughs> All right, you're at one. Kenra was not a bad draw. No reanimation spells. Should I don't know if I should have played that Usher though. Is this maybe a little going a little bit too all in if they have a sweeper? Shallow Grave. Hedron Crab. Easy game, folks. Boros beats. Who needs that fast bond that we first picked anyways? We still ended up with a really, really solid Boros aggressive strategy. And we got a trophy this time. Last time, I followed my gut. Didn't get us there. But this time, this Boros deck really just kind of had everything, almost everything that you want, really. Let's take a look at the deck. Just kind of lay it out here. So, yeah, let's, let's blow it up here. But we had... Decent fixing, right? We had the garden, a plateau, a wooded foothills, and the olifant. It's again, I want, I can't stress this enough. When you're drafting these Boros decks, it is super, super important, important uh, that you can cast your spells on curve because otherwise you're going to fall behind in terms of power. So you really want to try to have something like ten of each mana source when when you're drafting. And the only way you can accomplish that because you're going to be playing seventeen lands is to have at least three dual lands in your deck, possibly more. So just make sure you prioritize them highly. But this deck, I mean, we had Ragavan, the best creature in the cube, the best one mana creature in the cube. And then we had the premium removal spells. We had a great curve, a ton of twos. Copter is great in this deck. We had Gut to go with Inti and Karizev. We didn't really get to go off with Gut, but I do believe that this is a very good Gut deck. And then we had some, some solid top end as well with the Fury, the Palace Jailer, and the Parallax Wave. So, hey, this deck didn't even have power. Didn't need it again. Still was able to get the trophy. I am really happy with how this draft turned out. And we certainly could have gone a completely different direction. And that's often the case when you first pick that fast bond. But I feel like I'm starting to kind of find my groove and get a little more success. And instead of just... Instead of just tunnel visioning on my first pick necessarily with the card like the fast bond that we saw, just take the good cards and let the draft just kind of help guide where you need to go. And that's kind of what we did here, right? We took the fast bond. Next pack had a palace jailer. We're like, well, palace jailer is awesome. Let's take that and just kind of see where it goes. We didn't do a lot of waffling though, right? We took the jailer. Then we didn't take another draw seven effect. We just kind of stuck to our guns and stayed red white. And we had a fantastic curve. A lot of powerful cards, and we were able to get it done. Even beating, arguably, the best cuber on Magic Online in J-Bro uh, in the second round. So that's a crowning achievement for me. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. I'll catch you tomorrow.